Hey guys, it's Ruben from Sup Border and I'm here today to talk to you about sup fishing because I am a sup fishing geek. There's no doubt about it, I've been fishing since age two, three, and I've been sup fishing probably since when it first came out because I saw sup fishing as a great vessel to get ourselves on the water, definitely in spots around the world when you haven't got a boat and other means to get on the water. So we thought we'd put down some techniques that I've learned over the years onto a video for you guys. There's gonna be three videos we're gonna do. The first one, this part, is gonna be looking at the sup gear you need and also the fishing gear you need to do the most popular sort of method of sup fishing, which is trolling, which is basically pulling a lure behind the board. The second video we're gonna be looking at is how you actually do that, how you actually, the techniques needed to catch yourself some fish. And the third video we're gonna be looking at is other fishing techniques that you can look at and use too. So first off, remember this is a beginner's video to sup fishing. There is lots and lots of different techniques to fishing, loads of different kit you can use, lots of different stuff. This is a real beginner's look at sup fishing. So in getting you on the water and catching fish for the least amount of money and also using the gear you probably have available to you in your sup gear already. So looking at the sup gear we use for fishing. Board wise, personally I'm a real believer of the eye sup when fishing and I know some of you are going to go, oh an eye sup when fishing, fishing hooks, punches and all the disaster that could go with it. In all the years of my sup fishing I have never had a puncher or come close to having a puncher with a hook even when I've taken other people out sup fishing as well. Generally the eye sup is a fantastic vessel to get you on the water for sup fishing for a couple of reasons. One, it's generally lighter than hardboard. Two, it can take more knocks, you can bash rocks, slipways, beaches, it doesn't matter. And three, it's quieter than hardboard. Unless you have a hardboard with a wave piercing nose, the clatter of the hardboard does make a difference and it will scare the fish away. I'm a real believer of the eye sup because the air and the drop stitch material absorb some of the water shock and it's a much quieter board to paddle. If you paddle the hardboard to an ice up, you'll know exactly what I mean. It is a much easier, quieter board to paddle. The only time when the hardboard will be better is if you are paddling offshore and you're a bit more advanced fisherman and you want to paddle into wind and you've got a wave piercing no and all, nose and all that sort of stuff. But for general paddling, an ice up is fine. But if you have a hardboard, do not worry, you can go sup fishing with this. This is just my advice on which one is better. If you ask me to pick out of the two, I will always take an inflatable. Board size, as long as you're comfortable standing on it, it's got enough flow, and enough volume, like this Kurok is nice and thick, it's nice and wide, you can get a large amount of weight on the front from all the fish you're gonna carry home. So it's nice and stable, and if you do wanna do some casting and other fishing techniques, it does that as well. The other one as well, which is a nice board, I paddle quite a bit, is the Red Sport 126 by 30 It's a bit longer, so nice for paddling, there's long distance glides, and going somewhere with a good amount of kit as well. Paddle wise, don't worry, it's exactly what you've got as long as it's nice and strong and it's not going to snap on you when you're far away because you don't really want to be taking spare paddles and stuff as well because it's just more kit you have to take. So just a good quality paddle. A leash, always go for a coiled leash over a straight leash just because it's a little bit shorter, it stays more compact and it stays on the back of the board nice and neat. You don't really want a leash dangling around the water, it's just another thing that a fish could get caught on or a line could get caught around. So I always recommend recommend a coiled leash over a straight leash. But if you have them, doesn't matter, you can get away with either. Looking at what sort of stuff you can wear when you start fishing, obviously it depends on where you are, where in the country, what sort of climate it is and such and such. I find just a pair of board shorts with a pocket, because I'll show you why in a minute, a t-shirt or maybe a, a neoprene vest like this ion one is great for keeping the wind off and also if it does get wet it doesn't matter because it's neoprene. A definite must is a hat and a pair of polarized sunglasses really helps with spotting taking the glare out of the water spotting fish also looking at rocks and weeds in the shallower water and coupled with a hat on top it takes the glare off the top stops the sun from going down through and into the front of your glasses so it makes you basically you can see even better by having a cap on as well so polarized sunglasses and a cap are great if you have them if you haven't a pair of normal sunglasses will help they won't help as much as a pair of polarized glasses storage gear and stuff you can take on the water to carry equipment so you can use anything from as basic as a plastic bag to a backpack to a full-on fishing sort of front box to a cool box there is anything goes my general rule and general experience i've had dry bags and stuff they get a little bit tricky because you do put hooks in them you can put punches in dry bags which is not great so personally i would go for a hard sort of 
physical box over a sort of dry bag. A cool box is a very cheap, good way of getting you something that you can put stuff in, you can sit on, you can put fish in it, you can strap it to the board, and also it's very easy to clean out at the end. Other options you've got, waterproof barrels, or like the food storage barrels with a proper clip down lid. These are great, and they go into the bungees like this on the red here. And also you can still access it, and it's fully waterproof. The other thing as I've got is a board fisher, which is a really old one now. It's all moldy, it's been used loads. It smells a bit fishy and it's caught a lot of fish, but it's great for storing things. It has a paddle holder at the front there. Um, so your paddle slips in like this and you can slip it in and out like that. So it's very good for that sort of stuff. It's got various sort of rod holding points, trolling clips and stuff like that, and clips to your board. That's a nice little system. And it also folds down to a little little bag about that big. So if you're going on holiday, that's a great little system to take too. Obviously you can take a backpack and all that sort of stuff as well. But generally I find that stuff around me when I'm paddling gets a bit cumbersome and you don't really want to paddle with too much on your back. Another bit of kit that you definitely probably wouldn't have heard about before is a paddle leash. So I've made this one up. It's just basically a big thick bit of fishing line and it just attaches the paddle to the board if I let go of the paddle. So the chances are at some point you are going to have to put your paddle down onto the board to pull in or wind in a fish or sort your lures out or something like that. Having a paddle leash is a great way of knowing you're not going to lose your paddle. It is vital you do not lose your paddle when you are sup fishing. It is the most vital thing you can imagine and I have almost lost my paddle on several occasions, especially when you're winding in a relatively big fish, maybe the fish is pulling you towards itself because the fish, especially the weight of the ice ups, you will move with the fish, which is great fun. But if your paddle drops and it goes in the water, your fish will pull you and then your paddle is not by your board. And if you have a big, big fish, you could be in a lot of problems. I know some guys in the States of Florida, they have been pulled sort of two, three miles offshore with marlin fishing. And if they haven't got their paddle attached to them, that is big time voodoo okay so looking at the fishing gear you need now when you start off let's talk basic let's talk about not spending very much money let's talk about getting you into it getting some food on the table so then you can see if you enjoy sup fishing and go to the next level the best way to start to get into it is get yourself a hand line either a circular one like this or you can even use in the uk we call them crabbing lines something like that with the crabbing line what you want to do is you want to replace this dark green or orange line that you usually get with the lines and put some clear fishing line on at about sort of 15 20 pounds the fish do get spooked and you've got to be a little bit cautious so this sort of big thick old line is great for crabs but it's not very good for fish so definitely replace that i personally prefer a small little spool line like this because then it's easy to handle it's easy to wind up around it and also i can put it in my pocket like that and i can go sup fishing i can let some line out and I can go sup fishing and catch a fish. And it's very easy, and, I, and if I've had enough and I don't want to fish anymore, I can wind it all up on the line, including the lure, put it in my pocket, and carry on paddling and go home. So that is a really cheap, and I think you can get these for about five pounds or something, not even that. So definitely a hand line is a very good option to get you into it. Looking at rods, there's a few options. Now, the traditional rod is something a bit more like this sort of thing, this is a traditional spinning rod or a casting rod that you would use, put a lure on the end like this and you would cast it out and wind it in. Because we are looking at more trolling to start with, which is where you're pulling the lure along, you won't be casting. So you won't need that length of the rod. And to be honest, length of a rod on a sup sort of gets in the way unless you are casting or stationary. Because if you're paddling along with your mates, you might catch your, your paddle on it or poke somebody's eye out or it's just too long you don't need it because you are not trying to cast a million miles you are just here in one place trolling along rod wise i've made small rods i've made short stubby rods i've done hand lines I've done long rods i've done them all the best one i've come across is this little kayak rod four foot three i think it is yeah four foot three kayak rod and it's a line rating of eight to 14 pounds just in case you want to know you techie guys out there so a little kayak rod this was probably only 15 20 pounds i bought a small little reel about 20 pounds so for about 40 pounds you've got a complete setup that's great for sap fishing and it's great to get you into and it also doesn't cost very much so you haven't laid out the earth to um, 
try a new sport. The really good thing about this rod is because it's so small, it doesn't get in the way. You can lie it on the board, you can put it in your rod holders, and it's just really easy to use when you first start sup fishing. The advantage of a small rod or a rod over a hand line is with the hand line, you are gonna have to wind the line in when you catch a fish, which sometimes means you don't catch as many fish because the fish will fall off or you get yourself in a big tangle. So when you're doing that, generally a rod is way easier to use. These small rods are fantastic, and the way I fish these small rods is I basically just put it down my shorts like that. You get some great looks on the beach. I've tried lots of different techniques. You can use a belt clip, which holds the rod on, but definitely having it around your waist is way better than having it in the front of your rod holder or a rod holder by the, the front there, because a fish you'll be paddling along, a fish will hit the line, the rod will bend over at the front here, you drop your paddle, you've got to then pull your rod out and then strike the fish, which is where you set the hook so you catch the fish. Nine times out of 10, what happens is the fish bends, unless it's a really big fish and it hits the lure very, very hard, the fish will come off the line when the bend, the rod goes slack because you haven't struck striked it in time and basically the fish will come off with this method you're paddling along as soon as the fish hits the rod you just let go of your paddle and you just strike straight into the fish and try not to rip your shorts off it doesn't usually happen because you can pull with your body at the same time and then you can just wind in the fish nice and easily no tangles like you would do on a hand line and then you've got the fish there and also having the rod nice and short is great because then when you pull the fish up because your board ends here you just want to pull the fish onto your board and put it in if you had a long rod sort of eight feet long obviously the front the top of the rod is going to be bending like mad as you're trying to pull the fish over the board and you can i have broken rods by doing that so a short rod is better for a kayak sup fishing environment absolutely looking at lures and stuff you're going to be trawling behind the board so when we're taught trawling, the basic technique, we're going to be going into it in the next video in more depth, it's having a length of line out behind your board and you're paddling along and the lure imitates a fish or an injured fish and a bigger fish bites it. Basic principle. When you first start off, there's two ways to look at it. You either have sinking lures, which are heavy and very easy to cast, but if you stop paddling, they will sink straight away, or you have floating lures get yourself floating lures don't even look at sinking lures because you will lose them they will get snagged on the seaweed they will hit the bottom as i said they're great for casting if you're in a fixed location but when you're paddling along even if you cast out you put your rod in your rod holder or in your shorts you start paddling by the time you started paddling generally the heavier lure has sunk to the bottom and got caught on the seaweed so the way you know they're sinking or floating lures it will say in the description these sort of spinners spinners flashy lures this is about 20 six grams so obviously it weighs quite a bit the floating lures or generally called plugs like this one here is a bright orange one is a hollow fish it's generally got some small ball bearings in it it has a beak nose on the front there i'm not sure what the full technical term is for the nose of it but it's like a plastic beak on the front and that makes the fish dive and wiggle around it looks like a fish but the most important thing is if you stop paddling this will float on the surface so if you stop paddling talk to your friends or you want to get out something out of your cool box at the front you can with a lure like this very easy to fish you haven't got to be very aware about what you're fishing with very simple and i found that these will catch more fish than the sort of sinky lures definitely at slower speeds okay so look out for the next video where we're going to be going the techniques of using the hand line and the rod on the water and trolling and catching some fish for you guys and remember if you want to find out more about this video check out the Supboarder pro video on this video where we go into stuff in a bit more detail mm -hmm.